Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about how we can use recycled materials to make art projects because sometimes we don't always have index cards or card stock and so I wanted to demonstrate how you can turn something like a box that is for butter into a multi-layered paper sculpture. So the materials you need is a box like this, similar size, maybe similar thickness, and then some scissors, a ruler, and a pencil. Now this will be all, I'll be showing you how to design the parts that then you can decorate and cut, uh, and uh, I'll show you the end result as well. I will not be demonstrating uh, drawing strategies, more of just the construction process and, and how you can use found materials. So the first thing I want to do is I'm gonna flatten this out. So I wanna cut off all the extra flaps. I might wanna save the perfect rectangle shape to create a layer. Maybe these, you try not to throw anything away until you're completely done because you never know what you might wanna use. So I'm just carefully cutting along the folds of each of these tabs. And then I want to flatten out the rest. Now this box is put together well so that I can actually pull these parts. And have, now I have a nice flat surface. Now remember this if you need uh, a drawing surface as well. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually cut each one of these individual sections, and then I'll be using this piece and this piece to help create the pieces that make everything stand up. So I'm cutting along the folds once more, remembering my scissor control. Okay, so now we have everything cut apart. Now, like I said, this will be a primary piece I'll use, this will be a primary piece, and then these two. And then I might use these, we'll see. Um, this could be beneficial as well, but like I said, I'm not gonna throw anything away. I'm just gonna set things aside that I don't think I'll need. And we're gonna be thinking about foreground, middle ground, and background. And those are defined in art as the foreground is the items or objects or parts of the scene that are closest to the viewer. So they would be the ones that are in the front, like the foreground. And then the middle ground is what would be behind the foreground, but then in front of what we call the background. And the background is the very back part of the scene. Imagine if you're at a theater and you see the, the stage design, that, that usually is a great example of, of what a background uh, can be and how we imagine it in a work of art. So you'll be using these pieces to create your foreground, middle ground, and background. And what I like to do is I'm actually gonna trim one of them down and I'm gonna make them different sizes, so. I'm gonna cut this piece right here so that I can see this piece behind this piece. And then I'm gonna have this piece as my foreground. So you can already get a sense of how I'll be constructing these to be spaced out. And then we'll be using these as the supports. Now we will need to measure. We're gonna be using some of our math skills today. So what I recommend doing is making marks that are evenly spread out along one of your long rectangle pieces. And so I'll be using my Muppet ruler. And this Muppet ruler I've had since I was in elementary school. I remember buying it when I saw an exhibit at the Indianapolis Children's Museum that was about the Muppets. And I've always been a lifelong fan of Muppets. So I'm making marks that are, notice how this mark and this mark are the same distance from the end. So then you're gonna to wanna to continue. So I'll make my next mark two inches from the first one. So I'm gonna count one, two, and then I'm gonna do the same here. Counting one inch and two inches. 
And then the last mark, I'll do another two inches. So we'll count from there. One, two, and then here. One, two. So if we look at them, they are evenly, they're matching marks. Now we're gonna wanna cut down into this piece of paper, but we don't wanna cut all the way through. We wanna cut about halfway. So what I'm gonna do is actually measure um, a half an inch down, which is about right here, and I'm just gonna draw a line. Lines help me think about how deep I need to cut. It can be tricky to kind of figure it out on your own. And you wanna be precise, because you want all your pieces to fit together really nice so that they stand up. In the end, you're gonna have a sculpture that stands up on its own. And now I will cut each line. Being careful to control my scissors, I don't want to cut too far. So these will be the support structures as I mentioned, and now we want to cut our foreground, middle ground, and background so that they fit on top of those two pieces. So you're going to want to make sure all the marks that you make are, for each layer, are the same distance from each side. So I'm going to measure again using my ruler, and I'm going to measure a half an inch in on one side, and then a half an inch in on another side. And do the same for all of my layers so that they match. And then I'm going to make another half inch line. I want that cut to be the same depth as the cuts I made on the previous two rectangles. This ensures that everything will fit together nicely and stand up properly. Notice how when I'm using the ruler I stabilize with my non-writing hand, pressing down and then making the line that I need to make. If you don't, then you will have a tough time getting a straight line. So just applying pressure and drawing a quick line. Applying pressure, drawing a quick line. And then we'll cut these slots too. And once everything has been cut, now is the fun part. You get to actually build and construct all the pieces that you've made. So we'll put my background piece on first. So you notice how those cuts fit together just like that. And the same right here. And then we'll do our, whoops, we'll have to turn it around. And that's what's nice, this is easily adjusted. So if I wanna make sure that people can't see the label, I can make sure I cut things so that they're facing inward instead of outward. And then we'll add the middle ground. It's okay if it tips over. We'll just straighten it out when we get everything attached. So if you look, now everything stands up freely on its own, and from a bird's eye view you see how the two long pieces hold everything up, and then if we tilt it, you can see my foreground piece in the front, middle ground piece in the back, and background piece in the very back, or middle ground piece in the middle I should say. And then I can decorate each one of these and cut them and change them. And even if I wanted to add something closer up front, I could cut slots and make pieces stand up even closer. So as you can see, I've drawn on my different layers and trimmed them so that now they interact as a foreground, middle ground, and background.
My foreground is a lizard face. My middle ground is a cityscape with the Space Needle as a cheeseburger because I can see the Space Needle from where I live. And then my background is a giant hot air balloon that is looking to take a bite. So I hope you enjoyed this project and I'll see you next time. Until then, keep drawing. Bye.